Your prayers carry weight. This is prayer with energy. Fervent prayer. Fervent. Welcome to the hour of solution. Prayer will also go ahead of us as we also seek to present the gospel. So how should a person who is praying strategically for souls pray? They will come working with God. So what Satan does is he blinds them. Effective prayer of engagement. And to the Lord Jesus Christ, and to the Blessed Spirit, the Spirit of the Sovereign Lord, blessed be His holy name, from this time forth and forevermore. Our Father, we thank you for tonight, like other nights, we are very indebted to you unto the great working of the Holy Ghost. We see it's not by might nor by power. No matter how we try, we see it is by the Spirit of the Sovereign Lord. And thank you that the Spirit of God, it is He that gives us a platform to speak in your name and under your power. Sovereign Lord, under your authority, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, allow your word to lift someone, save someone, heal someone, deliver somebody. Let the power of God go through these lenses as it blesses us in this house. Let the word of the Lord enrich our souls so we may grow ever so closer to you. Thank you, dear Lord, in the precious name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Amen. Please take your seats. We bless the Lord for tonight. And uh, we know that souls are important to God. Souls are important to the Lord. Every soul is important to the Lord. Amen. Every soul is important to the Lord. I mean, God loves souls so much that he was willing to lose a part of himself, his son, to come and die for the sin weight of the world and to pay the sin debt. That's how much God loves souls. God loves his creation. And his creation, a replica, an example of him. The Bible says in the image of God created he them, male and female. So all of us have been created in the image of God to serve him. But somewhere along the line, many of us have faulted and not embraced the full work of the cross. We have not accepted salvation full and free. So tonight as we go further into our teaching, as this month is set aside for soul winning, winning souls and every day should be soul winning. We want to look at praying the proper way, praying according to the will of God, praying according to the mind of God, Praying strategically. And so I've captioned it, strategic praying for souls. Strategic praying for souls. Every soul is important to God. Now the soul that is not important to the Holy Spirit must not be, uh, you shouldn't waste time on. If you deem someone as unnecessary and that the Holy Spirit will not have anything to do with that person, then don't waste your time. But here we know that the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the Sovereign Lord, He wants to woo all men to come to the knowledge of the cross. So it is a wish and the will of God 
that all men come to repentance and to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now let's start off with James, the fifth chapter and the 16th verse. James chapter number five and verse number 16. I want you to see that the prayer of the righteous man, the righteous woman, the prayer of the saints, the prayer of the church, the prayer of the koinonia, the prayer of the gathering of believers is weighty. It's powerful. James, the fifth chapter, the 16th verse says, confess your trespasses or faults one to another. And then it says, and pray one for another. James knows there is power in your prayer. So he says, you pray for one another. If you do so, you're going to see results. And then it says that you may be healed. That you may be healed. And then he says the effective, comma, fervent prayer of a righteous man, not gender bias, meaning male and female, a gender person, meaning righteous person, avails much. The effective, fervent, it's not only effective, but it's got to be fervent. The effective, not effective, boring, but effective, fervent. Amen. Glory to God. The effective, fervent, fervent with fervor, with strain. Yeah. With some level of impulse in it, with vim, with energy. The Lord Jesus prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane, and the Bible says that sweat and blood came out from I'm I'm saying that if you that prayer was a low-key, low-tone prayer, there'll be no sweat. Because the garden was a cool place. I said there'll be no sweat at all. This was prayer with energy and prayer of engagement. The effective fervent prayer. Fervent prayer. We're going to win souls with great fervency. The effective fervent prayer. My prayer will not be earth bound. My prayer will be heaven bound. My prayer will bring results in the name of the Lord Jesus. And your prayer must produce results in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The effective fervent prayer of the righteous person avails much. Say my prayer avails much. Now that means that it carries tremendous weight in the heavenlies. Your prayers carry tremendous waves. It makes waves in the heavenlies. Your prayers carry weight. Your prayers have the ability to open up, hallelujah, the heavens. To open up the portals of power. To open up things that have been dammed up. Your prayers have the power to open them up. The effective fervent prayer of the righteous person, they carry weight. Say they carry weight. The Bible says they avail. They avail. The King James says availeth much. The New King James says avails. There's a continuum. Avails. Availeth. Continues to avail. The effective fervent prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The effective fervent prayer of the righteous person, the righteous man, the righteous woman, the righteous boy or girl, it avails much. I want us to sit on that because that's important. That is a bedrock to understanding that strategic praying, praying effectively, praying with fervency, praying with all of your heart, praying with all of your mind, praying with all of your being, praying with all, every ounce of faith in you, praying with under divine impulse, praying like as though your life depended on it, praying with everything that's inside you, the effective, fervent prayer of the righteous person availeth much. So your prayers and my prayers, they carry weight. If they carry weight, then it means 
they can do good for a soul that has been imprisoned by the devil. Our prayers can do what our trying to witness into an individual cannot do. Our prayers will allow the heavenlies to open the heart of a person so they can receive the word of the Lord. The scripture tells us in Matthew to pray to the Lord of the harvest that he may send laborers, that he may send laborers, that he may send laborers, of which you are one, praise God, that he may send laborers into the vineyard, amen, that he may send laborers, laborers for souls, laborers to go and win and bring people into the kingdom. And so it's God's idea and God's mandate that people come back to him. All of mankind in Adam, the first Adam, was lost. All of mankind in the last Adam are found. Bless God. The last Adam is the Lord Jesus Christ. And if we will come to him, if we will accept his finished work, no matter what else or wherever we have been, the grace of God will be meted to us. We'll see God's kindness, God's favor, God's blessing, God's upliftment. And we will also in turn go encourage other people to serve the Lord. Praise God forevermore. I want you to look at um, 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse number 9. 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse number 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, not willing that any should perish, not willing that any should perish, not willing that it. So it is God's idea. That none perish. It is God's idea that none perish or that all come to repentance in him. Blessed be the name of the Lord. But see, look at the first part. The 9a says, the Lord is not slack when it comes to his promise. And one of the promises of God is that he will save us and save our household. Now, your household is not necessarily the people that are within the confines of the, your house only, but also your lineage. People connected to you biologically, people connected to you by blood, people connected to you by spirit, people connected to you by association. These are all within the body of your household. These are all within the body of the promise of God. So there may be a friend who is not a part of your household, but they are a part of your life. And it is a wish of God that that person come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. And so the Bible says that God is not slack concerning his promise. Hallelujah. God is not slack concerning his promise. If he said he will save you and save your household, then he will save you and save your household. But we have to then find out how God intends to want to do this. And one of the key ways we understand is that God has deputized man in the earth to be his representative. That mankind will speak for God. Mankind will live for God. Mankind will represent God in the earth. One of the key ways that mankind represent God is through the agency of prayer. As we pray thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is done in heaven, God establishes his power through man that he may birth others into the kingdom. That includes people directly in our household, friends, associations, workmates, and so forth. They are all members connected to you. And it is a wish of God and the will of heaven that they come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. So God is not slack concerning his promise. He wants all men to come to his knowledge. Not willing that any should perish. That all should come to repentance. So we, st when we it's, it's not something we need to, um, we need to try to reinvent. No, God already invented it. It is his purpose that none be lost. 
and he's not slack to his promise. So if you have a son, a daughter, a niece, a nephew, an aunt and uncle, a grandparent, amen, a grandchild, that does not know the Lord. God is not slack concerning his promise. A sister, a cousin, a workmate that doesn't know God. God is not slack concerning his promise. Hallelujah. As some people count slackness. Because sometimes you may be praying for an individual and the answer will not come immediately. And you may think that God is slack concerning his promise. George Mueller prayed for his friend. And for years, his friend would not come to Christ. The day Mueller died, the friend came to Christ. But I pray that those you are praying for will not wait till they visit your coffin before they accept Christ. But that whilst yet you live, you will see the fruit of your prayer. God has mandated that through the agency of prayer, he will bring people into the kingdom. People will be born into the kingdom. He said, I can't stand to preach, but you can definitely pray. On bended knees, the power of God is realized. We do not understand all that encompasses prayer. But one thing I know for certain from 1980, when I started to learn to pray until now, I've come to understand that I may not see God with my natural eye. I may not feel him. I may not even feel his presence. But I know for certainty from 1980 until now, I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt, there must be and there is a God out there. Because there are things that I've spoken to this God, which I can see with my natural eye, in the secrecy of my heart, on bended knees, or just pacing and walking back and forth in prayer, that no man ever knew about it, but he, he, the invisible God, brought it into existence and I'm sure that you can give witness to the fact that God has also done so for you oh yes and not only that he has rescued you from trouble he has healed your body from disease he has preserved your going and your coming God has kept you from harm and danger when people ganged up and tried to unseat you God covered you with his blood you've been shielded going and coming it's been the mercy of God it's been the kindness of God it's been the hand of the living God hallelujah but it's also been with your cooperation because you understand you couldn't have done it by yourself it had to take humility to bend your knee to, to walk the floor and to ask God to come into the circumference of your life and as you have asked him time and time again you have seen the working of his mighty power so the spirit of the sovereign Lord will work for somebody today you may be down and out but you are not counted out because when God is in your camp you are in the majority you are in the company of innumerable angels uncountable angels angels on our aid angels on assistance angels being deployed on your behalf because the place of prayer is a place of the realization of the invisible powers of God Believer, understand you are never alone in prayer. That is why prayer must be done effectively and fervently. Prayer must be done with the knowledge that God is not slack concerning his promises. Has the scripture said, has he said it and shall he not do it? He wants all men to come to repentance. There is something I want to exegete in Acts the 7th chapter and 54 to 60. Acts chapter 7 verse 54 to 60. And here is Stephen preaching the gospel. He is a first Christian martyr preaching the gospel. And when they had these things, the preaching of Stephen... They were cut to their heart. In other words, the word of God convicted them. And they gnashed at him with their teeth. 
but he being full of the Holy Ghost. But he being what? Full, not half. Full. How do you think Stephen was full of the Holy Ghost? He was full of the Holy Ghost because he was a praying man. He was a praying man and a man of faith. He was a praying man and a man of faith. When the apostles wanted people to take after the business of the house, the natural administration of the house, one of the qualifications was that the person had to be full of faith and of the Holy Ghost. And Stephen was one. And the Bible says, he being full of the Holy Ghost, gazed into heaven and saw, he saw what? The glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God and said, look, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. Verse 57 says, then they cried out with a loud voice, stopped their ears and ran at him and with one accord. Pay attention to verse number 58 because it's very important. And they cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses lay down their clothes, watch it, at the feet of a young man named Saul. And they stoned Stephen as he was calling on God. So Stephen was preaching to them. Then Stephen is being stoned. And Stephen is praying to God. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, do not charge them with their sins. And when he had said this, he fell asleep or he died. I want you to particularly look at the 58th verse because it's of great importance. Here is where we are introduced to Saul who is going to become Paul. He's going to become a man on demand for heaven. But see here that Saul was taking or rather had been given the coat of Stephen. Stephen's bloodied clothing had been laid to the, as, as a witness at the feet of Saul. He was in close contact with the power and the anointing that rested upon Stephen. A brain man has everything around them anointed, including their clothes. Though bloodied, yet anointed by heaven. Can you see that? And so Stephen is praying to the Lord, Lord, I turn my spirit over to you. And then he also, in a loud voice, cries out, do not hold their sins against them. Not like today's Christian will call fire to come and consume them. Don't hold it against them. Don't charge them with the sin. Because you're ignorant doing this. Now, I want you to look at chapter number 9 and verse number 16 of the book of Acts. And you're going to see the beauty of the power of prayer. If you will pray selflessly, if you pray according to the word of God, if you pray according to the mind of God, if you pray according to what God's demands are, it doesn't matter what the status quo is. The power of God will do something about it. Here is what the scripture says in Acts chapter 19, verse 16. It says, for I will show him, talking about Saul, who is now converted, who has now become Paulus or Paul. For I will show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. Now realize that Stephen prayed him into the kingdom. But he doesn't realize that. 
I want you to see that prayer will open the heart of the greatest terrorist. Prayer did open the heart of Saul and made a Paul out of him. So prayer will also open the heart of your soul and turn them into Paul. I don't care if they have not been to Damascus yet, but there is a day that they will also have their Damascus experience. On that day, you may not be there to witness them like Stephen, but they will meet the Lord Jesus Christ. It will be your prayer that would have prepared them for that experience. It was the clothing of Stephen and the prayer soaked bloody clothing of Stephen and with the cry of prayer rising to the heavens that made sure that Saul would be wrapped up and the divine light and come into the knowledge of God. I pray tonight that you don't argue with people about the kingdom but that you pray them, you speak them, you announce them, you declare them into the kingdom. So this night we stand to declare our sons and daughters in the kingdom of God. We, saw, we stand to declare our brothers, our sisters in the kingdom of God. We stand to declare our cousins and our nephews and nieces in the kingdom of God. We stand to declare grandparents, grandfathers who are still alive. We declare you in the kingdom. We stand to declare uncles, aunts. We stand to declare you in the kingdom of God. We stand to declare friends, associates, even enemies of our souls. We stand to declare them into the kingdom of God. It is not about us. It is about the agenda of the kingdom of God. One has to be selfless when it comes to souls. Don't be happy that you can tuck your big fat Bible under your armpit and come to church. You must equally be happy that your neighbor is asking you, what must I do to be born again? It is not an argument. It is in settling it in prayer before the portals of power, before the portals of glory. In Acts 22 and verse number 20, Paul himself confesses this thing about the anointing of Stephen and how that he was now enrobed by Stephen's unction and by the prayers of Stephen. He says, when the blood of your matter, Stephen, was shed i also was standing by consenting to his death and guarding the clothes of those who were killing him i want you to understand this when you are within a close proximity of a brain person you are also under the power of the anointing you know sometimes a person may not be in close geographical location but god is ever closer amen bless god hallelujah wherever there's trouble god is i say wherever there is trouble god is i'm not saying god creates trouble but i'm saying that god is in the midst of where there is trouble troublesome waters where the trouble waters and turbulent times, there we will find God. Yes, we find the activities of the enemy, but we find God. When your heart is troubled, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. The scripture says that. Praise God. Hallelujah. It says, when I'm in distress, I will find him. When I'm in trouble, this has been a television broadcast of the Fresh Fire Worldwide Ministries, bringing salvation, healing, and deliverance.